Hey guys, 95 Flop Snaps here, and we are back for day two of New York Comic Con 2021 reveals. I think there is a lot to talk about with this con, so uh, let's do this. Alrighty guys, so day two of New York Comic Con reveals has come and gone and I can't believe it's the last day, like this is it. I genuinely thought we were going to get more reveals for this con, not just two days worth of stuff, but hearing everything about how there's delays and how it's all going to be pre-orders and that stuff's not going to arrive till December, makes sense as to why this con is a bit deflating and is small as it is but hey you know what there's still some really good figures amongst it so I'm not going to be super super harsh on Funko. You know, it is difficult times. But anyway, we know all of the pops and sodas that are coming out now and we know where they're going to be exclusive to in the US, which gives us Australians a good idea of where they're going to be here as well. So I'll be sure to mention alongside each figure where they're going to be exclusive to and how we should hopefully be able to get them here in Australia as well. So let's start off with some of the Disney releases. Now, Disney has seemed to have gotten a lot of love compared to other lines for this convention. There are a fair few figures, which is great for those who collect Disney. And I think they've done really well to bring us some figures that, you know people have probably been wanting for a long time or really suit existing lines so the first part we have is Arthur from the sword in the stone and this is Arthur pulling out Excalibur so this part makes so much sense and it's one that I guess we always saw coming you know they did release the Madame Mim for one of the exclusive conventions they also have released a whole new wave of pops from this line and they never had Arthur with Excalibur in that kind of mix so I guess everyone kind of expected this one to come. It was just a matter of when. Yeah, this pop looks great. It is something that needed to be made, I guess, for the line because it, it's significant. It goes hand in hand after an Excalibur. So it makes a lot of sense. For me, looking at this one, I'm intrigued that it's going to be a standard size pop. You know, that base looks really, really big and hefty. So I'm very interested to see what it looks like in box. I kind of hope it is a normal size box, not like a modified or unique box because those kind of look hard to display and they don't really suit if you had like a of pops going in a shelf so hopefully it's a normal size one but I'm very intrigued to see how that kind of works because of the size of that like the stones and the sword in it but anyway like I said Disney fans will be super stoked with this because it, it is a must-have if you enjoy this movie because of its significance to the film so it will be a Funko shop exclusive which means over here in Australia it will more than likely be a pop culture exclusive so Disney fans that'll be the best way for you to try and get this pop here in Australia Otherwise, if you are in the US, you can only access this one through the Funko Shop. So for the next reveal, I don't know too much about this one, but it is another Disney Parks pop, and it is what Funko is calling the Dutch Child. Like I said, I know very little about this one, but I understand that it is a ride in the Disney Parks. But I know a lot of people like this line, so if you know more about it, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to be educated more about this line of pops. It is not something I collect because, like I said, I don't know much about it. But they have released a few of these pops now, and I think they will continue to. And it'll make a really nice set. And yeah, I'd love to learn more about them from someone who really loves and enjoys and collects these figures. But it will be a Funko Shop exclusive, so again, pop culture is the way to get it here in Australia. And I believe that was the case for the one they released for Funkon as well. And then, of course, we have the final pop to complete that Musketeers line of Disney pops. We have Goofy to go alongside Mickey and Donald. It is such a cute-looking pop, and you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if down the road we see them in an actual three pack, maybe a limited piece count, I don't know. I don't want to give Funko too many ideas, but I mean, I feel like that might happen. It would make a lot of sense and it's something Funko tend to do. But anyway, talking about Goofy himself, he is so, so cute. I just love the face. I know it's a weird thing to say, but like the little smile, the teeth, the expression, it's, it's a really cute pop. And I think most Disney collectors are going to be buzzing to get this one to complete the set of three. Over in the US, it'll be an Amazon exclusive. So over here, I imagine this one's going to be pretty available and will be at most Australian retailers who are participating in New York Comic Con. So that's great news for Disney collectors who want to complete the set that this won't be exclusive to one place unless there's something drastic that happens but being an Amazon exclusive that usually means it'll be shared across all retailers here in Australia. The next pop that has kind of been announced but not announced, it's really really weird, is Yzma with the Loungefly mini bag. So this wasn't released on Funko's account. It came up on the Loungefly website and then was also shown on their shared retailer post that they do at the end of every convention. But from what I've gathered, this is going to be a box lunch exclusive, which makes a lot of sense to me, I think. And touching on the pop, I think this is a really cute line. It goes super, super well with the Kronk that they released for Funcon. So that's going to go hand in hand with that one. It'll look great. The bag 
really matches the pop too, which is a nice touch. But in regards to us getting it here in Australia, I'm not too sure if we are going to get this one just because it is paired with the bag. And I know there's a lot of issues with Loungefly convention stuff in the past. I don't believe we ever got the Snow White and Bag convention bundle here in Australia, but that was an exclusive to the Funko shop. So this might be a different situation. I don't know if we're going to get the pop alone without the Loungefly bag, but it's going to be such a hard one to judge. So I think for us in Australia, we're going to find out on the night whether it is available or not. So if you are pop hunting on the night online, just give it a quick search. Hopefully it's there, but I don't know. This could be a really interesting one. And like I said, I think we're going to find out on the night not beforehand and to finish off the Disney reveals this was a pop I actually kind of predicted I predicted this character just because it's such a recurring character in conventions and you know what this one didn't disappoint it is a cute one and I really really like the concept behind it so here we have the stitch with the hair rollers and his little good and bad drawing it is such an iconic thing that drawing we see a lot of it attached to stitch and you know what if he didn't have the hair rollers in this is probably something I would pick up I don't know why I think it's just cute of him holding the paper but this is really movie accurate as you can see in this still so I understand why he does have the hair rollers and look it adds another fun touch to the pop. It is a really cute mould and I'm really surprised this pop hasn't been done earlier but I think it's a great one. I know a couple of the Stitch collectors that I've spoken to are really excited about this one as well so that's really nice to hear. And if you're a Stitch collector I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Are you happy with the way it looks? Are you going to be picking it up? For me personally I really like this one. I'm very picky when it comes to my Stitch pops. And I won't be picking this up, but I personally think it's a really good one and a really cute one, so I can understand a lot of the hype that will be generated about this pop. In the US, it's a box lunch exclusive, which means for us in Australia, it'll be available at most retailers who are able to get allocation for it. So that is it for Disney. We move on to another line that I knew was going to get some pops, and that is My Hero Academia. Now, it's not stuff that I predicted or wanted, but that's okay. They've still given us two really cool figures. And something really interesting to note about these releases is this is the first time in a very long time that for My Hero Academia, the convention pops aren't new characters. So we've gotten two characters that have had pops before. And I have to admit, I still really, really like them, despite, you know, the slight disappointment of not having new characters to collect. But first of all, we have the All Might in what people are calling his civilian attire. So there he goes, he's holding the shopping bag and an umbrella, looking like a commoner, and I really, really like it. I haven't seen up to this part in the show, but I really love anything that's like weakened All Might. I just really love the way he looks in pop form, and it's just a fun design. I really, really like it. I'm a big fan of anything weakened All Might. And after doing a bit of research, I understand that this is the All Might kind of, yeah, in his day-to-day -day kind of thing. And I got some spoilers that, you know, this is his civilian attire when he's a normal person and he's out and about, you know, living a normal life and people are aware of who he is. And that his name is actually Toshinori. I believe that's how it's pronounced. So I'm really intrigued to see if that will be on the box or if it's just going to say, all Might, but either way, I'm probably going to pick this one up. Like I said, I really love like the weekend All Might look. For some reason, I don't know why, I just do. So I'll probably pick this one up. You know, it's the first time he's in this kind of attire, and I think obviously it is a significant part of the show, so one that I want to pick up for sure. The All Might here is going to be a GameStop exclusive, which like Fat Gum was at FunCon, so I think he's going to be available at most retailers again here in Australia, which is great news. It's always good to see the My Hero Academia pops readily available because it does have quite a large following. Now this second announcement for My Hero was a bit of a controversial one. This pop here was meant to be a Hot Topic exclusive, but never got released. And now all of a sudden it is an NYCC pop, which is cool with me. I don't mind, you know, we've gotten the figure at least. And it is Froppy or Tsuyu or whatever you call her by. So it looks like she's kind of got a water effect. I'm not too sure. If you guys know more about why this figure looks this way, let me know in the comments below. But to my understanding, it's like a, like an underwater type thing. That's what it looks like to me and makes a lot of sense because of Froppy and her character. But yeah, with the whole release around this pop, it's just so strange. It reminds me a lot about the Super Tails and Super Silver 2-pack that we got for SCCC once upon a time how that was meant to be, you know, a normal GameStop release, I think, and then all of a sudden it was a con pop. So it seems like Funko have done this here, and I guess it makes sense, you know, they, they seem to be struggling in terms of, you know, producing pops on time or having them ready for certain things. So it makes sense that they kind of shifted this one and said, hey, let's just make it an NYCC pop instead of a Hot Topic exclusive as originally planned. But yeah, this will be a Hot Topic exclusive anyway in the US. So I guess it's kind of ended up there anyway. But for us, it should be available pretty much everywhere. Gang Orca from the last con was a Hot Topic exclusive and you can still buy him for retail over here. So we'll hopefully see her at all Australian retailers, which is great. Like I said, it means it's more available for Aussie collectors and those who really enjoy My Hero. 
Next up, we have a pot from the office, and guess what, guys? It's not a Dwight, but it is a Shroot, and it is his cousin Moe's. This is so exciting because this is the first time we've gotten a pop of this character. So it's really refreshing to see Funko do this for a line that has been quite saturated lately. And it's just really exciting. I've seen a lot of people get excited about this and a lot of people who collect The Office kind of have a refreshing new pop to collect. Not another Dwight, not another Michael, not another Jim. We have Moe's and this is a perfect one. The fee is such like an iconic thing to Moe's. So it's so good to see that there written on him. And look, it's such a funny character and this is so much more special, I guess, for office collectors because the person playing Moe's is actually a writer and producer of the show. So for me, I kind of want this purely for that reason and because I do like Moe's as well. He's pretty funny, but I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see. I want to try and be super smart about what I pick up for this con and not go too overboard, especially when there's so many cool sodas to get. But I'm very excited that they've made this pop, you know, it makes so much sense and I think it's super, super refreshing for Funko collectors who love The Office. And being a GameStop exclusive means he should be readily available here in Australia as well, so that is great news. So this next announcement was so funny, I was up refreshing like why, what is going on here? As you can see, Funko released the McDonald's pumpkin pop, I don't know, we were so confused when it came out, I wasn't sure if it's going to be a nugget, the stress is a pumpkin, or a pumpkin nugget. My mind was going to a million places, as I don't know too much about the Nugget line. But Fungo released, you know, this post and didn't have the photo attached. So everyone was kind of making memes and making fun of it. As you can see, I made a couple of funny comments. I don't know, I was just getting impatient. I just really wanted to see what the heck this thing was. But then finally, about 34 minutes later, we got a picture. And it is the Nugget dressed as a Halloween pumpkin. And after doing a bit of research, this figure and the inspiration for the figure originates from the Halloween McNugget Buddies Happy Meal toys in 1992, which is really cool. Funko keep drawing back on all these old toys that released and kind of gives this line a retro toys feel. So it's pretty interesting that it's kind of in the ad icons, despite these guys being... They're right icons, but also retro toys. So it's, a, it's just a really cool crossover. And I can see why a lot of people who collect retro toys also want to collect these nuggets. But yeah, I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this one. Not just Maccas collectors or retro toys or ad icon collectors. I think people who like Halloween and all that pumpkin-y stuff are going to probably want to pick this one up too. Maybe to have out of box. I don't know. It's a really, really cute though. I like it a lot. It's probably one of my favorite nuggets that they've released so far. And it continues the trend of nuggets being released as con exclusives. But the interesting thing with this one was that it is labeled as a Golden Archers Unlimited exclusive. I don't know what that means. Maybe there's a McDonald's store or something called that. Let me know in the comments. But it also says it's going to be a Funko exclusive, which makes me really conflicted about whether we're going to get this one at Pop Culture or not. You know, it's really hard to tell when they're like labeled on these weird exclusive places that aren't your regular shops in the US. But this all makes me believe that if we do get it here, it's going to be at Pop Culture. And I think it's, again, it's going to be one we find out on the night whether we're getting or not here. Another pop that we knew was coming was the Pizza Rat. I think he's starting to become a given when it comes to New York Comic Con. It was very interesting to see that there's only one of him being released. I thought maybe they would put out a 1,500 piece alongside him to kind of match up with Paulie because Paulie's got a limited piece. So we've got the Pizza Rat here. They've changed up the figure a little bit. You know, he's a brown color rather than the gray that was released last year. So they've made a minor difference there, but Pizza Rat collectors will probably really like this and probably want to pick this one up to go alongside the existing ones and keep that set complete. It's going to be a Reed Pop exclusive. In the past, I believe we might have gotten Reed Pop exclusives here at Pop Culture, but for you guys in the US, yeah, Reed Pop, I believe it's a Funko Shop exclusive as well. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can pick those ones up. But yeah, being a weird exclusive, who knows, we may not even get it here in Australia. It's so hard to tell. Alongside the pizza wrap, we did get another Pauly Pigeon, and I think this makes sense. You know, you've got a limited piece count one, and you've got more of a common kind of release of him. Basically, the only difference is the colors are reversed. He's more predominantly green and a little bit of white, but I like that they have released the second one, because for those who like collecting one of the mascots for each con, will want to pick up a Pauly, and this offers a way for them to do that if they miss out on the limited piece one. But yeah, the only major difference between this and the limited count is that the colors are reversed, which isn't something new to Funko. They've known to do that before, and look, I'm okay with it. It's great that there's going to be an opportunity for people to get that one if they miss out on their piece count. 
So yeah, this will be a Repop exclusive as well. I know I'll be trying to pick up this in the pizza wrap for my cousin Jesse. He likes the mascots a lot. So fingers crossed I can get them for him. But yeah, again, if we do get it, I imagine it's just going to be pop culture. So fingers crossed. So we do have one more soda for this convention. And funnily enough, it's one that they didn't announce again. I have no idea what fun they were doing. But it was on the final release picture of all the figures and where they're going to be exclusive to. But anyway, it is the Pumpkin King Jack Skellington Soda. This thing looks pretty cool. We only have some really small images of this that are really blurry and weird. They've been taken from the big retailer sheet. But the strangest thing is that it's saying it's a Hot Topic exclusive, but it's a Funko HQ exclusive. And my mind's just like, wait, what does that mean? Like, it's so confusing. Everyone's a bit puzzled. My understanding and my assumption is that this is probably not meant to be a New York Comic Con release as well. I think this was meant to come out at Hot Topic and they just pushed it in for this con to make it look a bit bigger. And the weird thing is, again, we don't even know if there's a chase for this. It just says it's a 15,000 piece exclusive in the US, which is huge for a con number. So yeah, I don't think this was intended for the con, but it's just been shoved in there to make it look a bit bulkier, which is fine. I see why Funko have done it. And it will be popular. You know, it is a Nightmare Before Christmas soda, which is a very popular line. And look, I'll be trying to get one if I can. I, I just wish we knew if there was a chase or not. I would have to assume there is. You know, we can't have that many piece counts and not have chases involved. So I imagine there will be. So I'll try and pick up a couple to open up on the channel. But yeah, if it's a Hot Top exclusive and a Funko HQ exclusive, I don't know if there'll be much trouble getting this one in your collection. Again, I think if it is a Funko HQ only, it might mean that it's exclusive to pop culture, but he's hoping it's available everywhere because I know there's a lot of collectors out there who love this line. And I know there's a lot of soda collectors out there who will be picking it up just to kind of keep the collection going. <laughs> and on the topic of Hot Topic Pops being released as NYCC exclusives, we got Jiraiya from Naruto, another one that was meant to be released and now is a con pop and was not announced. So Funko, I don't know what they're doing. I guess they knew if they posted it and people saw it they would have blasted them saying oh this was meant to be a hot topic pop you know they've been saying that anyway so Jiraiya coming as a hot topic Funko New York Comic Con exclusive basically so it'll be available everywhere here in Australia I imagine and you know what despite the shambles behind it it's just a really cool pop and really great to see Jiraiya on his own as a pop in the past we've only ever had him on the pop ride form on the toad so I'm sure either way the Naruto fans are happy to have him in a single you know four inch size box which is awesome not something I'll be picking up despite liking the Naruto pops. And I think the Naruto fans are going to love this one, so will be pretty available, which is great news for those collectors. And really nice to see, you know, not another variation of existing characters. It's one that we've never had in the 4-inch form. I honestly don't know how I forgot to mention this in yesterday's predictions, but Diamond Pokemon. We know it's a given for convention releases, and I guess that's why it just flew over my head. As I said, it was a given, and this time around we've only gotten the one though. But anyway, to finish off day two's reveals, we have the Eevee Diamond Edition pop. So this is the second version of Eevee where she's kind of like pouncing or in a standing pose. Personally, I prefer the sitting one. I think it's cute. It suits Eevee a little bit more. And I guess with that Eevee, it's already had a convention exclusive where it was flocked. So it makes sense to see the other version of Eevee in the diamond form. Look, personally, I prefer the flocked Pokemon where it makes sense. So it is a shame that that's kind of died out and it seems like Funko have, you know, put that in the corner and said, we're going diamond, everything, diamond, everything. Put some glitter on everything, sparkle it up. Which is completely okay because I love the look of them. In person, they look incredible. So I'm happy to pick it up and I do have all the other Eeveelution ones. So it's keeping the set complete. So I will be trying to get this one. But yeah, super strange to see Funko divert away from the flocked ones. The flocked ones make sense where they do. They were great for Growl, if they were great for Eevee, they were great for Vulpix. You know, it makes sense. So it is disappointing to see them kind of be put in the corner, but I guess maybe the diamond option is cheaper or they found more success with it. But anyway, Eevee will be a Hot Topic exclusive in the US, so I think she'll be pretty available over here in Australia, as have all the Pokemon Pops for conventions in the past. And look, if the previous Evolution Diamond Pokemon are anything to go by, I think this will be a hot favourite from the con. So to break things down in terms of accessibility, all of these pops will be Funko Shop exclusive in the US, which I think will mean that they are pop culture exclusive over here in Australia, unless for whatever reason they get shared with EB Games as well. So Arthur from the Sword in the Stone, Funko Shop exclusive. The Dutch Child from the Disney Parks, another Funko exclusive. Our Pumpkin Nugget Friend is another Funko exclusive. The Pumpkin Head Jack is also an exclusive. You've got the Cavity Soda and the Bingo Soda. The 1500 piece Pauly Pigeon, the other Pauly Pigeon, the Pizza Rat, and weirdly enough, to round out the 10, the Rocket Raccoon. This piece count is ridiculous and it's a Funko Shop exclusive, which uh, 
I don't know. I don't understand it, but that's that's how it is. So all those pops and sodas are likely going to be only at Pop Culture. That's at least my rough guess. We'll have to wait and see. And all the other pops and sodas will likely be stocked all around Australia at your favourite retailers. And for the US, this is the guide that Funko have put out. So here you can see, if you want to pause and have a look, this is where all the exclusives will be available in America. And then of course, Funko do release images for other countries. So you can go through, pause them and have a look. Otherwise, you can head over to Funko's Instagram or Facebook page and they have those images there as well. So with that said, that wraps up everything for NYCC. That's all we're getting. It's a bit weird. Usually NYCC is a lot bigger. But again, with all the items being pre-orders and stock possibly coming in as late as December, it's going to be a very interesting con and I think it's going to look really, really differently. I wonder if we're even going to have in-store drops because a lot of the retailers over here will probably just get their allocations and put them up for pre-order. The only place that maybe will have an in-store drop is somewhere like Pop Culture, whose stock allocations are different for the online store and their physical stores but anyway here are my must-haves the Funko sodas I'll be grabbing every single one they're all really exciting to me I think they're all going to be fun majority of them except I guess the Jack Skellington to a degree are new characters that we haven't seen before in soda form so I just love collecting sodas so I'll be picking up as many of these as possible and doing a nice big opening on the channel so be sure to subscribe to stick around for that and in terms of the pops I'm definitely getting the Boba Fett that thing is incredible I love the Mandalorian line and I really want that one to go side by side with my Boba Fett that I recently picked up from the show. I think I'll definitely be getting the two My Hero Academia pops. They're both really, really cool and very unique looking. And I think they're going to be great to check out in person. And of course, we'll be getting the Diamond Eevee from Pokemon. So not as many pops compared to sodas, but I'm happy with that. It means I can probably spend a little bit more on getting some extra sodas and doing a nice big opening, which is super exciting. I am contemplating the Carnage and Polaris from the Marvel releases. That Carnage looks incredible in that Venom box. I don't know, there's something about the black box that contrasts really well with the pop and looks really, really sick. So I'm on the fence about that one. We'll see how I feel on the day. And Polaris is just so cool. I feel like it's going to be an awesome pop to see in person. I need to be really strict with my collection because it's ever growing and it's getting crazy. And then same deal with the Master of the Universe pops. Normally I would like to pick them up, but I feel like they sit on shelves for so long and they end up getting cheaper down the line. So I don't know if I'll be picking them up straight away. Maybe I'll wait down the line, but I feel like during the rush to the con, I, it's easier to just leave them to the side and get them later on and focus on getting the stuff I actually want while I'm checking out. Because who knows, maybe I'll go and add those Masters of the Universe pops to my cart and lose out on stuff I really, really want. The other one I am, like I said, contemplating on as well is the Moe's from The Office. I think it's really great that we've gotten him in pop form. I really, really like the character. He's super fun. And you know, that, that link to being the producer and writer of the show is also a really cool thing to think about and possibly have in the collection. But again, like I said, I'm trying to be strict. I'm trying to be good. So I, I don't think that'll be one I pick up immediately. Maybe when I get down the line, if there's ever a sale and he kind of survives and sits on the shelf. But that is it guys that's a lot of talking i need some water i need a break i really hope you enjoyed these videos i've been a lot of fun to film and a lot of fun to talk about the pops be sure to let me know in the comments below what you're picking up you know it is a small con so i guess our bank accounts are looking pretty happy right now but yeah let me know what sodas what pops what are you going to pick up what are your thoughts let me know in the comments below i love chatting about this type of stuff so i hope to see you down there in the comments section be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe because there will be soda openings from this con no doubt on the channel i'm so excited i cannot wait and there's lots more funko content to come in general but anyway guys that is enough from me thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and remember as always like dragon says never give up and good pops will find you see ya